If you've taken calculus, you've probably learned these two notations for derivatives. The prime notation seems to be a favorite of my students. It's rather intuitive. If it's y prime, that's the derivative of y. There's less to write, and if you want more derivatives, you just add more primes. Then there's this. And what calculus teachers stress is that this is indeed just another notation. This means y prime, the derivative. Now, personally, I like this notation. I can use it as an operator, and it's clear which variable I'm differentiating with respect to. But I understand why students don't like it as much. It's a little bit clunkier, especially with things like implicit differentiation. But what really gets me going is that this is not a fraction. This is a notation. Yet after stating this, calculus teachers go on to use it like a fraction. Of course, I'm guilty of this too. This is one of the main techniques. All we have to do is rearrange this equation, put all the y's on one side, all the x's on the other, as if this dy over dx was a fraction of two variables. And then we can just integrate both sides. Remember your rules for anti-differentiation. Don't forget a plus c because it's an indefinite integral. But we can find what c is using that initial condition. And this is indeed the answer. You could take its derivative, substitute it into this original equation, and this would hold true. The secret is we're really using the chain rule Let's look at our problem again, but make sure we only use proper mathematical operations. Let's indeed put the y with the dy on the left-hand side, but we're not going to do anything semi-dubious by multiplying by dx. What we really like to have happen is to integrate both sides with respect to x. Now, this is valid. And there's actually no problems on that right-hand side. We can just anti-derive x in the same way we did earlier. And on the left-hand side, it really feels like we should just be able to cancel dx over dx. But that's really just restating our original problem. We can't just cancel out these dx's because they're not fractions. What we're really trying to say is that if we integrate a function of y dy, that should be the same as integrating that function of y times dy over dx dx. If we can prove this, then those dx's cancel out in the way that we want. So how do we prove this? Well, let's take that integral of f of y dy, which is very well defined, and take its derivative with respect to x. And already, if we do some subtle manipulation using the definition of the chain rule, we can get very close to what we want. This is the chain rule with this notation. And here our u is this integral of f of y dy. So basically, I'm taking the derivative of u dx, which according to the chain rule is the same as differentiating u with respect to y times the derivative of y with respect to x. So all we've really stated is the chain rule, but with our u being this integral of f of y dy. If you can get your mind around that, the rest of the proof isn't so bad. Because now, apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. We're differentiating an antiderivative dy. That is, d dy of the integral of f of y dy should just be f of y. That's fundamental theorem of calculus. If I integrate a derivative, they sort of cancel each other out like squaring a square root. So we have this statement. And the only thing to do now to get what we want is integrate both sides with respect to x. You might notice that the f of y dy over dx, when integrated with respect to x, 
is the situation we're trying to simplify. The other side is a little bit clunky, but simplifies rather nicely. And although it's a little convoluted, it's actually a really similar thing happening here. We're basically integrating with respect to x, the derivative with respect to x, and those should cancel each other out. Basically, we're just ending up with the integral of f of y dy equaling what we want. There are some other issues though. What happens if we start taking these differentials and sticking them in other places? Kind of like in this expression. We'll have to deal with this in a different way, but the answer is very interesting. I promise you that. I'll see you in that one.